the Tampa thing's really interesting. So I, I don't know much about kind of Tampa hip hop history. I, I know of yourself and uh, the guys that you ended up rocking with, Funk Ghost, a little bit later on. Um, but mostly I know Tampa as like a skate scene and the the Tampa Am and the the skateboard culture that goes on in Tampa. Um, when you were growing up, was there much of a local rap community in the city? Like you mentioned, the Puerto Rican guys that were doing b boying and like break dancing in the mid '80s. Did was that was that really kind of popular, and was there much of a community there in Tampa at that early scene? Nah, I mean that that event with the dudes break dancing from they were from New York, so they were into like the hip hop, hip like real hip hop type stuff. Like yeah. down here, it was you know, it wasn't um, that wasn't as far as I know. I didn't know a lot of other. I'd never seen local people like break dance and all that. But but what was big down here, um, like I said, was bass music. So. You know what I'm saying? There really wasn't. There really wasn't much of a. There hasn't really been much of a big scene just because it, it, this city is not really. I don't. I can't explain it. It's not really known for, for hip hop. Um, but we do have it here. I mean, in the late '80s, early '90s, a lot of people don't know this, but a, a, a pivotal guy in Tampa hip hop uh, was uh, DJ Kenny K. Rest in peace. Um, he he's a uh, he was part of Digital Underground and Digital Underground has roots here in Tampa, Shock G. I'm not sure if he's from Tampa or whatever, but he lived here. He grew up, he grew up here, down here and then moved to Oakland and did the whole digital underground thing. So Kenny K was a DJ in digital underground, but he stayed here and he, he ran a, a like it's pretty much the only hip hop show we had. It was on the um, community radio station, WMNF 88.5. And um, so he was like pretty much the pioneer in terms of like hip hop, hip hop roots here um we had a lot of bass booty shake music like i said um uh we had like uh, the first record i really remember down here is like 91 92 is called my cadillac by this group uh mc nasty and dj freaky fred it's like some bass music um trying to think like a lot we a lot of people don't realize tampa is the first not first but we were we were one of the first cities to ride around with slowed down music like like how DJ Screw did yeah. in Houston, so except we call it we didn't we didn't call it Screw we call it slowed down, and there was a DJ named Rocket Rod who was who was real renowned in the city, and he had a little record shop and he sold these tapes of like it would be all the latest like rap songs slowed down, so you could ride to it and it's, you know it's like people like to do it because of the system like it really made the the, the bass drag out and rumble, um, <clears throat> so I don't know how long Houston had been doing that thing but. Um, I'm not going to argue who was first. I'm pretty sure we had been doing it just as long as them, dating back to the 80s. They just got the recognition for it uh, by the rest of the world. But um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we had a big crew down here called Jam Pony Express. Um, some of the founding members were from Fort Lauderdale, and then they connected with some guys up here. And um, they they were, like, rocking the parties down here. They put out lots of mixtapes. And um, that's pretty much it. That, that was the early scene. Like I said, we didn't really have, like... Uh, 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 like a lyrical or like you know more traditional East Coast scene. It was very uh, ghetto music, bass music, sure. dance music, party music. We've all we, we're a party city. We invented a lot of dances here. Um, it was you know in more recent years they call it Jook City because of the dances, jooking. It's like just a club town. That Kenny K show that you were talking about, did they have like a call-in um, kind of opportunity and like live freestyles on air and that kind of thing? Like, um, so yeah, I guess you can think of it like um, the Stretch and Bobito show, for example, if you've seen that documentary and how it kind of ended up forming its kind of internal community within the station itself. Um, like, were you guys calling in and like performing on there or like going to the station itself? Um, how much of a community was that show? Or was that kind of before um, time to some degree? Well, specifically Kenny K is before my time. Um, I was, you know, when he was around, you know, I'm like eight, nine, ten, eleven years. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so. But when he passed away, um, a brother by the name of Mad Lynx took the spot, and uh, that's where we. That's pretty much my era where I came in. The same station, same show, um, or whatever. But uh, so I don't really. I'm not really familiar with how the Kenny K show was, but. Mad Link show, yeah, he did have a call in. There was local, there was regulars who would call in or whatever, and and um, it was a different vibe than Stretch and Bobby. It was a little more serious, but um, yeah, and I mean, we went up there. 
believe as equilibrium we know we went up there early like 96 97 and they you know mad links would give people local artists uh, you know a chance you all you have to do is like call them up and say yo i got a i got a demo and we're from tampa we want to come come up there and you know he pretty much would make it happen so now when did you end up starting actually writing so at this period of time if we're talking at least the first little section of your career you said you were more focused on the production side of things um when did you actually start writing and, and practicing rap um probably like 93 94 and I, the like i the, a lot of stuff i was into at that time was a lot of bay area and like west coast shit like i was into a lot of spice one and e40 and all that type of stuff. So, like, a lot of my early, like, real first stuff I did was kind of sounded like Bay Area stuff. That's why when I did, I had a lot of fun when I did the Boss Hog Barbarians album with Jay Zone because we, I was able to, like, do a lot of that Bay Area funk type stuff on there. And um, so, yeah, my early stuff was that. And it was, I wasn't real lyrical. I was just kind of, like, funked out. <laughs> and uh, then, like, maybe towards, like, more 95, I started taking it a little more like I wanted to be real ill with it, I guess, you know, and I was trying to be like really complex and do all these crazy, like really push. I was, so basically I went from one extreme to another. Like I was just trying to be like laid back funk type stuff. And then I wanted to be like the illest dude in the world. Why even bother? Like obviously it turned out really well for you now, um, of course, but at the time, why get into to rap? Like if production's kind of going well and you sort of have a sound that's, that you're adopting what pushed you in order to start writing um i mean i really didn't i really didn't know anyone else that rap like that at that time or wanted to take it serious so i you know i i had to make the music i just you know what i'm saying i had to produce for myself so that's pretty much why just because I, I wanted to make records but you know i did like i said i did eventually develop the passion to want to rap but gotcha. it started with just making beats you know what i'm saying 